The risks we are experiencing now are no different to the ones we experienced prior to our first democratic elections back in 1994, when we had lots of crime, lots of uncertainty around thing, how things were likely to turn out. But what we've seen post the 1994 elections when the country was galvanized is we saw business starting to work closely with government. So I think one of the, the big challenges is, is for business to start to reach out to government and start to, to show some confidence because we know that business has got some money to spend. There's lots of talk about this 800 billion rand that the public, uh, sorry, the private sector has available to spend. And I think if, if the levels of uncertainty, uncertainty around certain policies can be addressed with government, if business engages more proactively with government, especially around infrastructure, I think we know some of the challenges that we faced with e-tolls and those sorts of things. But there are things that business can do where they can invest in infrastructure and find ways to recover some of those investments. But, but there's a need for certainty. I mean, one example for, uh, and it's something very important for our country at the moment, is the energy sector, where government have now made it clear that municipalities can go and source energy privately. And there's an opportunity where business can start to invest in the energy sector that will boost the, the economy because one of the things that's holding back the economy at the moment is all the load shedding and the lack of energy. So that's one example where business can make a big impact. The current budget as um, uh, outlined by the minister two days ago didn't give much hope to the construction industry. In fact, um, it's flat if not going backwards and but we do know that the population in our country is still growing we're still seeing massive urbanization happening people still need houses schools clinics and all these sorts of things so i think for now um, our industry a business like EFRISAM needs to make sure that we are very efficient at what we do, we manage our costs really well and, 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 and make sure that when, when the upturn comes that we are able to continue to provide the quality service, the quality products that are needed because we cannot sit and hope that our infrastructure will, will, will continue at the levels where it's, where it's at. We are seeing, in fact, we are seeing instances where municipalities haven't spent money and we're seeing water shortages, we're seeing protest on service delivery because people aren't getting the services that they need. And I think if we all just continue to right-size our businesses, cut back on our staff, when the need arises for us to start spending money, we need to be in a position where we can do these things because they are much needed. So there'll be a bit of pain in the short term, but it will turn around. We can't carry on at this level. So let's address the skills part first. So, so we do have initiatives internally where we have our own developmental programs where we are developing and training artisans. And, and, and many of these artisans, once we've equipped them with certain skills, even if they do not necessarily find opportunities within EFRISAM, they are able to find opportunities elsewhere. So we found that that, that program helps. We've taken a different approach to that. Uh, we've also embarked on, so as part of our social and labor plans, uh, we've engaged with communities where we've identified needs in certain communities around maybe classrooms at schools or clinics and those sorts of things. They're not going to uh, offer a massive boost in terms of projects that are needed. But I think what they are doing is they're addressing the needs of local communities. We're directing our spend a lot better and we're making sure that uh, these uh, projects benefit local communities. But I think in time we're going to need big projects like the harbour projects that were announced in, in the KwaZulu-Natal and hopefully with a turnaround in Sandrail and we start seeing some work being done on some of our major highways and our major routes, that will start to, to boost the economy again. But for now, I think our focus is on our social and labor plans, engaging with the communities, making sure that how we spend our money is we are very smart about growing skills and, and, and investing in the communities.